What's up guys, my name is Ryan Shirley and I spent the last few years exploring Southeastern Europe and I wanna show you my favorite places. So here's my Balkans top 10. The Balkans are known as one of Europe's most affordable regions. There's no set definition of the Balkans, but usually they are made up of the countries of Albania, Bosnia, Bulgaria, Croatia, Greece, Kosovo, Montenegro, Macedonia, Moldova, Romania, Serbia, and Slovenia. That's a lot of countries. The Balkans are famous for its medieval towns, natural beauty, and complex history. It's a region I hope everyone can explore. All right, let's start this video off at Montenegro's coastal town of Kotor. Located in what some consider to be Europe's southernmost fjord, Kotor is one of the most well-preserved medieval old towns in all the Balkans. It's grown in popularity over the years and it's a popular cruise ship stop. If you want to get one of the best views of Kotor, you can drive up the Serpentine Road to get a panoramic view of the entire bay and surrounding mountains. I mean, just what a beautiful city. From Kotor, you can make the 30 minute drive over to the nearby islet of Saveti Stefan. It's this 15th century island fortress that has been converted to a five star luxury resort. If you can afford it, it would be quite the place to stay. While we're still in Montenegro, we're going to check out the Durdavika Tata Bridge. This is one of the coolest arch bridges that I've ever seen. The bridge was finished in 1940 and it consists of five arches with its highest being over 564 feet above the river below. I mean, just such a crazy looking bridge. All right, after Montenegro, we're gonna head over to the neighboring country of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Known for its beautiful rivers, medieval bridges, and fascinating history, it's quite the place to visit. Now, one of my favorite places in the country is the city of Mostar. The most popular feature of the city is the old bridge. It's an Ottoman bridge from the 16th century. It stood for 427 years until it was destroyed in 1983 during the Croat Bosniak War. But in 2004, it was rebuilt. Now, one of the cool things that I love about the bridge is that they let you cliff jump off of it. I believe it's a nearly 20 meter fall down to the river below, so it's pretty high. But next time in Bosnia, I'm going to make sure to send a gainer off of the bridge. Another really cool spot in Bosnia is the Kravika Waterfalls. Only a 40 minute drive from Mostar, the Kravika Waterfalls are home to an incredible amphitheater of cascading waterfalls with some as high as 25 meters tall. What's cool is they let you swim there, so it's just a great place to spend during the warm summer months. After Bosnia, we're gonna head up to Croatia. Now I have to say that Croatia is one of the most beautiful countries in all of Europe. One of my favorite places in Croatia is Dubrovnik. Dubrovnik is one of the most popular medieval towns in all of Europe. The history of Dubrovnik dates back to the 7th century when it was founded by refugees. One of the most notable features in Dubrovnik is the walls that surround the city. They're almost 2 kilometers in length and anywhere from 4 to 6 meters thick, which was used to protect the city throughout history. The unique look of the city has made it a popular filming location for series such as Game of Thrones. Now another fascinating city in Croatia is Pula. The city is home to the Pula Arena. It's this perfectly preserved Roman amphitheater that was constructed from 27 BC to 68 AD. It's the only remaining arena to have four side towers and it's the world's sixth largest surviving Roman arena. What's cool is you can walk inside of it and it's just such a wonderful sight to see. Now right off the coast of Pula is the Brugini Islands. That's a set of 14 uniquely shaped islands that have a really distinct look to them. Now if you want to head inland, you can check out the Plitvis Lakes National Park. It's home to some of Europe's most beautiful lakes and waterfalls. They remind me a lot of Bosnia's Karvika waterfalls. You take an electric boat over the water and explore the 16th terraced lakes of the park. There's one walkways to walk and explore. I mean, just such a beautiful place. I can't believe the color of the water there. All right, after Croatia, we're gonna head up north to visit Slovenia. Now, one of the, my favorite places in Slovenia is the fairy tale destination of Lake Bled. Located just 40 minutes drive outside the capital of Ljubljana, Lake Bled is one of Europe's most scenic lakes. It's famous for its island that has a church on it. Another stunning place in Slovenia is the River Socha. This river is over 138 kilometers long and passes through western Slovenia and Italy. It's considered to be one of the most beautiful rivers in all of Europe and I can totally see why. It has a very distinct emerald color to it. 
that I've never seen before. It's a great place to go kayaking and river rafting. I mean, the river just full of so many rapids, winding turns, and scenic bridges. I can't think of a better place to spend during a hot summer day. Afterwards, we're gonna head down to Bulgaria to the beautiful city of Varna. Now Varna is located on the east side of Bulgaria, right on the coast of the Black Sea. I went here last summer to film a video for the Golden Sands Hotel. I had really had no expectations, but I was pleasantly surprised by its beauty and history. It reminded me a lot of California's coastline. It had great beaches, wonderful weather, and tons of entertainment. I was also surprised by the amount of history there. There were tons of Roman ruins. I drove out to this place called Cape Caliacra. It's this point that goes out to the ocean and it's home to an impressive ancient fortress that dates back to the Roman times in the 5th century. Another cool historic spot is this place called the al Zidaha Monastery. It's a medieval orthodox Christian cave monastery that dates back to the 5th century. Now another really cool spot in Bulgaria is the Belogradchik Fortress. It's located in the Balkan Mountains. It's this ancient fortress amongst some really unique rock formations. The fortress was captured by the Ottomans in the 14th century. The thing that strikes me about the area is how they incorporated the rocks into the fortresses. I mean, just such a unique place. I've never seen anything like it. All right, after Bulgaria, we're going to head up north to Romania to see the medieval castles of Transylvania. Now, Transylvania is a very intriguing yet spooky region. Transylvania is where Bram Stoker's novel Count Dracula takes place. Now, one of the most famous locations in Transylvania is the Rand Castle. Located near the city of Brasov, the castle was built around the 14th century and served as a fortification against the Ottoman Empire. Due to its dramatic architecture and possible connection to Vlad the Impaler, the castle has been named Dracula this castle. I could totally imagine Count Dracula using this castle as his hideout. Now Romania is also home to this really cool road called the Transfiguration Road. It's full of hairpin turns and it's easy to see why it's one of the most popular roads in all of Europe. After Transylvania we're gonna head over to Greece to visit the medieval monasteries of Meteora. Located in central Greece, Meteora is home to six monasteries built upon nearly inaccessible rock pillars. During the 14th century monks were facing attacks from Turkish raiders so they needed a place where they could worship in safety. They decided to start building the monasteries upon the rocks. These places of worship were perfect for the monks because the only way to reach them was by climbing long ladders. The monasteries became a place of refuge and over 20 monasteries were built during the 14th century. I was lucky enough to go here a few years ago. When I got there, I was just amazed by the architecture of these monasteries. They are perched perfectly on the cliff edge and you wonder how people could have built these in the medieval times. Monks and nuns currently live in the six surviving monasteries. The largest one is the Monastery of Great Meteoron. If you're ever in Greece, make sure you visit this magical place. Another incredible spot in northern Greece is Mount Olympus or otherwise known as the mythical mountain of the gods. At 9,570 feet high, it's the highest mountain in all of Greece. According to Greek mythology, this is where Zeus and other Greek gods resided. If you want to hike the mountain of the gods, it's recommended to do the hike in two to three days, and I'd recommend having a guide because it can be quite dangerous and a confusing hike. While we're still in Greece, we're gonna head over to the iconic city of Athens. It's the capital and largest city in Greece, and it's one of the world's oldest cities. Athens is such a wild place with so much history. One of my favorite places in Athens is the Acropolis. If you want to get into Parthenon, it costs about 20 euros, so it's a little expensive, but it's totally worth it, especially if you're there. When I went to the Acropolis, I was able to get some of my favorite time lapses over the city. They're just an endless sea of white buildings with mountains in the background. If you do go to Greece, I recommend exploring Athens for at least a day or two. It's just such a unique place. Well, that is it for my Balkans top 10. There's so many more places I wish I could include in this video. I'd love to explore more of Southeast Europe. Let me know where your favorite place in the Balkans is in the comments below. If you want to feel relaxed, I started a relaxation channel where I post hour long videos of places such as Greece or Switzerland with calming music that you can just play in the background to bring some peace and nature in your life. You guys can find me on Instagram and TikTok at Shirley.Films. Anyways, it's Ryan and we will see you later.